a part of the family and we love cruising in it and uh, we, we often go down to Byron Bay for, for lunch with the wife and she loves uh, being in it with us and, and quite often well, we'll just park it in the street and don't even lock it. You know, that's how much people respect the car. Hi, my name is Frank Oliveri and this is my SS Tirana. It's a 76 model and it's a, a A9X tribute car, tribute to Peter Brock and the legend that he is. A little bit about the car. Um, I bought the car in um, 1980, yeah, uh, early 80, and I've owned it ever since. Um, originally, it was a um, royal plum colour, purple, and um, I didn't like it, <laughs> so we uh, we changed it to the flamenco red. So um, yeah, and uh, I've owned it since then. It's had a couple of refurbished. Uh, since that time, uh, the most latest one was uh, a year ago. Unfortunately, it had a bit of rust in it, like these cars do. And um, yeah, so we cleaned it up and, and uh, got it back on the road again. Prior to this, I, I used to own an LJ Tirana, a um, bit of a Tirana uh, enthusiast, I suppose, a Tirana nut. And um, I got my my love of cars from when I was um, 10 years old, basically. My my family uh, were market gardeners, um, World War II immigrants. And um, my uncle was a bit of a, a car enthusiast himself. And to cut a long story short, um, my grandfather's farm was turned into a dirt track speedway yeah and uh, it became one of the world's most famous ones uh, it was called Liverpool City Raceway and um, I was 10 years old when uh, we opened and I spent 22 years of my life there so uh, it's basically been ingrained in my DNA since then and um, yeah a lot of good times a lot of good years the whole family and friends worked the dirt track and as I say it became very famous um, we um, we had uh, regular uh, major events with the Americans uh, coming over and racing against the Australians. We had the Marlborough Grand National 100 lapper with um, prize money of $25,000 back in the back in the uh, early 80s and full pit stops and, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's uh, basically where I came from. Like most kids back in the 70s and 80s, we did a little bit of a illegal street racing, but it was in a controlled environment, so to speak. So uh, back at a place called Brickies, which is now the home of uh, uh, the uh, Olympic um, uh, Village, and uh, spent a lot of years of my life there as well. Um, there used to be a hangout there called uh, Big Chiefs. It was like an Arnold's type of drive-in uh, 
um, milk bar, so, so to speak. And uh, yeah, it was a regular thing every every weekend, and um, that's where I got a bit bit of a niche for drag racing. And uh, yeah, from there on, uh, I got married and had kids, and unfortunately, the car became uh, second uh, to the family and got stored away for many, many years and basically resurrected when we moved to Queensland uh, 20 years ago and uh, I've since been nurturing the car to get it back on the road to the condition that it is now, so yeah. Still do a bit of drag racing, but now it's legal. I've got a, a LC 1971 GDR uh, drag car with a big block Chevy. Does uh, 80 in the quarter mile at 265 kilometers an hour. So um, that's where I get my, um, I suppose, my rocks off, so to speak. A uh, little bit about me. I'm a businessman. My family's been in buses for uh, 68 years, and I'm a third generation uh, into the family business and we operate uh, buses in New South Wales as well as Queensland and um, hence my, my um, uh, mechanical uh, sort of prowess has been ingrained from that as well. So um, yeah, uh, that's a bit about uh, my history and my love of cars. I did have a hot rod recently but uh, um, got rid of it unfortunately. Um, so I've got cars in, in the DNA and uh, I, I enjoy cars. And, if you respect the car and you respect the people around the car and the rules around it, um, you get a pretty good run from the uh, you know, from the regulator. So, yeah. Getting back to the dirt track days, um, my father uh, gave me a bunch of programs at the age of 10 and he says don't come back until you sell them. So <laughs> I eagerly went out and sold them, I think we were selling them for 5 cents a piece and um, came back proudly said uh, dad dad I sold them all and he says yeah okay here's another, <laughs> another bunch keep going. So basically it was a, a working relationship in the, in, the, in the family business of Liverpool City Raceway and my family um, was pretty hard on us with working. We didn't have much time to watch the races, so I would sneak away quite a lot to uh, stand there and become a spectator until I got busted and the old man said, back to work. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, pretty interesting that um, as I got older, I got more involved in the management of the Speedway at all different levels and also in the promotion of the, of the uh, events that we were holding. As I said earlier, the Marlborough 100 lap at Grand National was a, you know, a key event and the, uh, the um, bringing over of the American, um, uh, what they call them, Grand National sedan team and um, one of the highlights of that was when uh, I actually was the, drove the pace car for the start of the uh, Marlboro Grand National and it was a Z28 Camara and um, I proudly uh, drove that around carrying the Australian flag in one window made of mine on the other window carried the American flag so it was really cool you know uh, leading leading the, the start of that race and it was actually a, a, a bitumen we went from dirt to bitumen back in the days when um, Bob Jane uh, built his uh, Thunderdome and um, we collaborated with the Jane family and uh, we turned our track into a quarter mile high bank NASCAR type track and we operated that as a as a, a bitumen track for I think it was about five years and we held regular events with the um, other tracks in Melbourne and Adelaide International Raceway. Um, uh, there was all New, Newcastle Raceway was also bitumen, so was Tralee uh, down at Ca uh, Canberra. So it was really um, fast, close racing with the high bank, um, high bank uh, tar track and it was incredible. We, the highlight of that part of our, uh, our history was that we 
brought AJ Foyt out uh, to race the speed cars, which today are called the wingless um, sprint cars. And um, you know, it was uh, incredible to see the world champion of AJ Foyt racing around our track. memorable events where we held the world um, uh, solo uh, championships and our solo bikes were dirt track bikes that slide around the track and so it was a twin track complex back in the day it was a single track and then when we went high bank bitumen we went to a smaller dirt track for the solo um, motorbikes and, and as I said we held the world pairs championships and uh, many are a world champion started their career at our track at Liverpool City Raceway. Interesting story, when I went to purchase a, a, a new car, because um, I basically uh, run my old Tarana down to the ground drag racing at the Brickies and the Castle Ray, so um, I was looking for a new car and I was going for a Corvette and they were too expensive, so the guy that was selling Corvettes um, over at Tarrant Point said to me, I've got a Tarana, you might be interested in it. So we went around and had a look at this Tarana and I stuck my head underneath the back end and in 79.80 for uh, this car to have a this 9 inch disc brake rear end was just like unheard of because um, four wheel disc brakes were just coming into sort of thing and that's what the A9X is. The A9X was um, a follow on from the L34 which had brake problems because it had drum brakes in the back and the A9X um, had disc brakes in the back. Well this had the 9 inch forward disc brake in which was quite common in the racing days and uh, the um, salesman said to me that this car actually had track heritage. Unfortunately, I, I haven't been able to, to prove that, but the, the car itself it is um, very heavily modified with suspension-wise. Apart from the disc brake rear end, it's got KMAC suspension front and rear, um, track-type suspension with the heavy-duty brake stabilized bar. It's got a pano bar in the back, as well as a torsion bar on the front. It's got um, Heim joints um, on the control arms and and uh, a lot of suspension modifiers. So, you know, the, the, the evidence that this car was a track car is there in the suspension and the fact that it was all there when I bought it in 79. Um, it had the um, A9X um, um, flares, add-on flares and uh, the bonnet scoop and all that. Um, but unfortunately, it's not an A9X. I wish it was. <laughs> But um, it doesn't really matter because I'm never going to sell it. Uh, my kids might <laughs> when I'm dead and buried. But uh, yeah. Original numbers car, uh, SS uh, 5 litre 308. Um, yeah, on the modifications, I, I back in the day when uh, we were a young family and we only had one car, my wife couldn't drive a manual, so I put an automatic in it. And unfortunately, it's still an automatic today. But one of my uh, goals is to put re re revert it back to a manual. Um, but the old Australian gearboxes wouldn't handle the power too much. Um, so it'll probably be a Tremec, um, five-speed Tremec that we'll put in it. But the engine's original, um, other than um, it's got some, uh, basically it's the L34 spec engine, uh, but it's not an L34 motor, with the roller rockers and the cam and uh, uh, some head work and uh, a little bit of bottom end work. It's not 
it's not a fast car, it's not made to go fast, it's made to sound good, and it does. Uh, yeah, so that's a bit about the history of this car. And uh, as I said, it was originally royal purple. I didn't like it, so I painted it fl flamenco red. And uh, being Italian, red is uh, 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 the colour of choice, I suppose. Um, and just on that, I'd, I probably still would rather have this rather than the Ferrari. I'd, have, I'd love to have both, but <laughs> it's a bit hard to, to uh, try and finance that. So that's a little bit about the car. It, it is um, a great car to drive, but it is an old car. It's not like your brand new Commodore or Mercedes. The suspension's really hard and you know, it, it's good for its time for, for um, doing a bit of circuit racing. And, and funny enough, uh, back in the day when uh, we had the Speedway, my dad wouldn't let us do any racing because he was hard ass. And um, I used to have to sneak away, as I said, to watch the races. And one time on the high bank um, tar track, I actually entered what we used to have a family dash where you enter your car and you actually race the clock. And I did that under my best friend's name just to get out in the track and have some fun. So. Yeah, um, it's got a drop tank in it as well, which is um, yeah, used for Bathurst racing, 85 litres. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, it's about it, really. Yeah. car is um, a part of the family and we love cruising in it and uh, we, we often go down to Byron Bay for, for lunch with the wife and she loves uh, being in it with us and, and quite often well, we'll just park it in the street and don't even lock it. You know, that's how much people respect the car and they ask a lot of questions about it and even the young ones, um, they know what the car is and uh, they're very interested to know the history and, and stuff like that on it. Um, no, and uh, often we'll get a note on the window saying, if you're interested in selling, give us a call. Uh, but as I said before, we won't be selling it. Uh, my sons might be. But yeah, no, um, going cruising all the time, especially on Australia Day. You know, we put the Australia flags on there and and uh, everyone yells out, Tarana, and it, it really gets um, a lot of attention. And funny enough, it, you might have Ferrari next to my car, but a lot of people always put, pay more attention to my car than the Ferrari because it's such an iconic car. And um, yeah, the, the combination too with the uh, gold wheels is quite common in Piranhas, but these aren't the typical Simmons wheels. These are Compromotive wheels, which I uh, bought back in 82. Similar with the seats, they're Wolf Race seats. Um, as I said, we, we bought them in, in 82. So, um, yeah, uh, other stories about cruising, it's just on the highway, you got people hanging out the cars, you know, uh, putting the thumbs up and, you know, cruising through uh, Surface Paradise, you often get stopped so that people can take photos with it, especially around uh, the Indy cars or the V8 supercars event. Um, so, it, it, yeah, I'm quite proud to be able to cruise around and just enjoy the company of everyone else around us.